Hey guys, welcome back. It is the Scrappy Chick Floss Tube. This is number three. I'm Cindy and this is Sam. We call him Sam Sam. We readopted him and he came with the name and it's just so cute with the whole Sam Sam thing. We kept it. Um, so that's my little buddy. I thought I would introduce him while he's right here under my feet. He kind of does his own thing. I do have two outdoor kitties so they Probably won't visit unless I do a video of my she shed. And somebody said they were excited to see that. And I would love to show it off. It is actually cooler tonight. But um, it's a mess right now. I really need to do some organization. And thought about bringing you guys along with that. Um, kind of what I'm doing when I do it. And maybe even ask for some ideas as well. I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do out there, um, but that's in the future. I just was totally not ready today, so um, I'm sorry, not yet, but we'll do that soon. So I am back in the dining room. I picked a new angle so I can reach something to show you here in just a few minutes. Um, anyway, welcome back to those of you that have visited before. I was amazed at how many views that I got because I am basically, I don't want to say a nobody, nobody's a nobody, but I don't have a huge Instagram following because I don't post a lot. Um, I am not a big known name out there by any means. I haven't been to any um, cross-stitch conventions, any, you know, getaways, which I would love to. Um, maybe in the you know next couple of years I went to tons of scrapbook and stamping conventions back in the day and um, went to CHA for a number of years but um, I just sort of took a, a back seat on all those kind of things for right now but hopefully soon because I think the retreats would be a lot of fun um, anyway so for right now as I was saying I just don't have a lot of people that even know that I cross stitch none of my friends do none of my family does except for my daughter who I'm trying to start so um, I was just shocked at how many people found my video subscribed to my video liked my video and um, I even had a wonderful shout out um, I was gonna do this later but let me go ahead while I'm on that track um, Laura from Textily Crafts um, shouted me out. She has recently started her videos as well. She's done four and she is just adorable. She has all kinds of fun projects, a nice variety. Um, she started kind of like I did, um, getting back into um, with Fat Quarter Shop, stitching with Housewives, um, Ada stitching, um, small or larger counts, and then she, like I, have gone slowly up in our counts and you know taste has changed and all that so I feel like we've had you know um, a lot of the same um, part of our journey which I believe is exactly what she said but anyway she's just she is precious you definitely need to go check her out she's relatively new her last video if I remember correctly was the one maybe not the last one the one before that where she died fabrics and her orange is amazing so if nothing else go see it for the coffee dye and the actual writ dye that she did on the fabrics especially if you've never tried it she did a great demonstration of that anyway thank you thank you Laura that was awesome um, I do have a few more people I want to talk about in a couple of minutes but we'll come back to that as well so I don't even know where I was I'm I've been so scattered at week at work all this week. It's just it, insane. It's like I'm I'm feel like I'm totally brain dead. Um, but we were talking about being new, so that that was amazing that I did get that shout out. Um, found um, some new people from there. I have I think picked up a few from Instagram. Um, I got an amazing shout out from my daughter on Instagram. That one about made me cry. Um, very very sweet what she had said um and then um you know other people just find you randomly because it's a first video so i guess youtube has some sort of um, algorithm that puts newer videos in there don't know have no idea how they how they do all that but anyway so welcome back welcome to any new viewers i'm glad you're here with me today and thank you for jo joining me and joining my journey as i'm learning how to do <laughs> floss tube um and i do have one more story about my son i'll share in a little bit but let's kind of get into some stitching because that's why everybody's here so um <clears throat> 
excuse me, I don't have, uh, I do, I have one previous finish, but I don't have the whole finish with me. Um, we were talking about the bees the other day at my first video, and I have a few bee things in my display, but I also had done one of the barns from Stitching with the Housewives. This is the August, and that's the little companion that goes with it. I did actually make the black, or I bought the black basket and have the flowers and everything, but I haven't dug my bee stuff out of storage yet, and I really need to do that because it is now August. And I have some other companion things that go with this, or not companion, but they, um, they're they bee themed. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But that that is one previous finish. And then I had shown you guys the, um, the Subway art one from Primrose Cottage, the 4th of July, which again, I keep forgetting the name of that one and I cannot write it down to save my life. Um, but beside that, I have displayed in my house this is why I wanted to sit here. Um, I think this is the very first large quilt that I ever did. Um, this was, I don't know if anybody follows along with Lori Holt. Um, I fell in love with her when I first started quilting and she um, has a lot of different sew-alongs. And one of them was this patriotic one. And I loved her fabrics, I loved the colors, and I, I just jumped right on in on this one. She has since made a Stitchy Stars cross-stitch pattern, which I showed you last time in my whip parade, and I'm doing mine a little different. Um, but this year, she has put out patterns for a table runner or a bed runner using some of these same patterns that was in this quilt in different seasons. So she has like a red and a green and she has the patriotic and I don't recall the others. I'm assuming there's an autumn and a spring, but I, I don't remember. And she has the same in cross stitch, if I remember that correctly. But um, this is one of the first quilting projects I had ever done. I don't even know if I'm gonna attempt to show this whole massive thing or not. Oh my goodness. Um, but this was a ton of fun. It was the first time I had tried any free arm or free, free arm, free, mm, free motion quilting. That's what it's called. Um, and <laughs> it's a disaster. It is awful. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I probably won't do that again unless I get a lawn on machine. But that sits right behind me on a little bench over here beside my other Fourth of July that I had just recently shown you guys. So that is previous finishes. And then from there, I have one FFO since I saw you guys last. So for those of you that are new, I did my first video about three weeks ago. And then a week after that, I realized I was getting ready to go to the beach and wouldn't have time to really do a video in there. So I did a whip parade. So you guys have seen two different things and a lot of different stuff. But so since the first one, I did have an FFO and I am mortified to show this. This is the Blue House neighborhood that I did for the Nicole Spohr summer plus anniversary, I believe it was, stitch along. And I had shown it finished, did not show it fully finished. Um, as I, you know, was finishing it and I'm like, oh yeah, and I'm straightening this and getting this all together. And I put it on the paddle that I had, I stuck it in there in my den um, on one of the long tables with some stuff around it. And it took me a week or two before I realized, you know what, that thing's not mounted straight. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even tattle on myself. Um, it, it's killing me now though. And I need to pull it all apart and I just, um, you know how you put something in timeout after you need to frog it and you really don't want to? This went into timeout and just stayed in the den because my family won't notice it's not straight. Um, of course, my husband noticed off the bat. Um, he probably noticed before I did because he neglected to say anything, but when I said something to him, he's like, oh yeah, you didn't know that? I was wondering why you did that. I was like, oh, you, you could have told me, sweetie, that would have been really nice and you know, maybe before I got mad at it, I could have fixed it. But anyway, so that is my one FFO since I've seen you guys. And then, I thought I was gonna have two finishes. I do have one, and this is the ABC that I had um, shown you guys almost done in the first video. Put this one up on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. I need to turn that into 
possibly a pillow, possibly a long finish. I haven't really decided because, and you guys are gonna laugh at me. Remember I showed you those two little flat pillows that I haven't stuffed yet last time? Apparently I did it last year too. I got these from Primrose Cottage all stitched. I sewed the little pieces on to make them into pillows but I never stuffed them. Um, it was probably at the very end of August or September when I did that. So when I pulled them out today, I was like, oh, I have two more that need to be done. So anywho, that is the two that I already have. So I'm not sure if I want a bigger pillow to go with that. Don't really know. Um, or do I want to do a flat finish? I would like to do the hive rolls at some point because I think that's really precious. So I kind of want to do a larger pillow and then these could go on to maybe a tiered tray. Um, not really sure, because I am working on something else, which I'll show you in just a second as well, which will go with that. Um, so those are my only finishes since last time. I do have two new starts. They weren't exactly what I had planned to start, but I had thought about it, and I think I told you guys that. One is Honey of a Tiny Town. It's the first tiny town that I bought. I've, I've always thought these are really, really cute. And because I had all the bee ones from Primrose Cottage, I thought these would go great. So I tried to adapt my colors a little bit. And I didn't want to kill that one dark blue in here. I wanted to pull some of the lighter ones, um, like from the little bee pillows, and put in here, maybe in place of the medium blue and these blues over here. I'm not really thrilled with what I have so far, but I don't think I'm gonna frog it either. I think if I just keep going, add more of the other light blue, I might like it better. I don't know, tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any ideas. So this is what I have so far. I started this on the way down to the beach. It is on a 25 count natural Lugana. Um, as I had said before, I don't really do a ton on Lugana. I do something once in a while. I usually have at least one going, just so that for um, for truck travel, you know, the, the big diesel, it kind of shakes. So I have a really hard time seeing the little holes anyway, but to try to get the needle in the little hole with the truck rolling down the road, kind of hard. So um, Lugana is great for that. So I started on this. Um, there is some white in this hive. I don't know if you can see that right in there, down at the bottom. And one of the houses is supposed to be white. So anybody willing to comment on this, what, what would you backstitch that in? Um, I'm not sure if I wanna do maybe this lightish brown that's going in here. Um, maybe instead of black, I'm doing like a charcoal right there to match that other chart. Um, or maybe even in like the honeycomb color. I'm not really sure. So any suggestions on that, absolutely leave me a comment. Um, so yeah, I worked on that at the beach. That was fun. All of my bee things are living, as I showed you before, in this case that I made using, and I did look it up this time and I will link it below. Um, it's Chris Sherman who did the pattern for this and I believe this one's called the Ashley stitch case. You would have to look. It's the one that has the thread bed, the little pocket, and then the other one as well. Great little pattern, very easy to follow instructions, and um, I really like the way that turned out. So that's, that is all the bee stuff. The other new start that I had, that I told you guys I was debating, is this one, and it's Let's Talk Stitching from Hands On Design. I wanted to do this, um, for my she shed, for my crafty space. Um, so I started that kind of in the middle of July. It was after that first video, but before we went to the beach. We worked on that for a couple of nights. Did not get very far on that, but I was happy, made a little bit of progress. I think the colors are actually gonna turn out really pretty on that gray. And that is Ancient Ruin 32 Count. That's really pretty. I am using all the called for DMC for that one. And then that lives in, I had shown you this case last time, Puppy Cotton Fabric. And it's another one, it's called a Project Keeper, I believe she calls them, and it's Tiger Lily Designs. She either makes them or she sells the pattern as well. And um, great pattern there. She actually even has a video for you to download. 
and follow along, which was extremely helpful. And um, yeah, that was fun. So I <laughs> made another one. Um, I do have another new star. Oh my gosh, I kind of forgot about this one. So this was started, I wanted to do a Halloween on the 31st didn't happen. I didn't get to stitch at all. There was just stuff going on around the house and I think grandkids running around that night, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I didn't get to start anything. But for summer camp, Colorado Cross Stitcher, I wanted to join in that. Um, I had joined in in June, but I did not in July. And this time I said, uh, I'm going to pick something I can maybe actually finish during this month. So... It was something that's new to you, and I picked this little key fob from Barbara Anna Designs. I love so many of her patterns. I would love to do some of those Dreaming Girls. Um, that would be a fun wall in my she shed. The colors are so bright. I, I, they speak to me. I love, love, love bright colors like this. I don't decorate my house in colors like this. For Halloween, it's okay. That's, you know, that's just fabulous. Um, but I thought in my she shed that would be kind of fun. But anyway, I found him. He's like a little key fob. He's kind of small. I can get him done. He's, I want to say, like 75 by 75 stitches, something like that. I did not get a ton done. I worked on this a little bit on the first and last night, starting to form the bottom of that boot there. But I love the colors. I'm using some of the called for DMC. Um, and some of them she called for the variegated DMCs, and I couldn't find those at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or even Amazon to order them, and I didn't want to wait for Etsy. I wanted them like, I want them right now. Um, so I just went ahead and picked, I had fun picking a bunch of bright colors, <laughs> honestly, um, and got more than what I needed just so I could come home and play with them. But that's living in, this case was also using the pattern from Tiger Lily Designs. But on this one, I used that fun Halloween fabric from Art Gallery Fabrics from last year. And just did like a random patchwork on that. And I think this turned out so fun. I am in love with this case. Um, that's some of the fun colors and then there's more behind it. And then over here is sitting the Midnight Watch, which I haven't started. Um, there is someone doing that, I'm trying to remember who, and I thought about reaching out to her and see if she wanted to do a sew along or at least stitch it together so I have a, a friend doing that. So that is that one. That one I've worked on only for a couple of nights. I did work on, this is the day, and for all these I will try to put a photo right here. <laughs> if I can figure out how to edit it and add a photo. I have been watching, okay, so here's the story. I've been watching YouTube videos about how to edit YouTube videos. And I was telling my son this the other day, and he was just laughing at me because I remember, this is my fourth child, and I remember when he was, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12, and I would walk into his room and I'd say, what are you, what are you doing? He said, I'm playing games. And I'd say, but you're watching TV, like you're watching video games? And he's like, well, duh. I'm like, so you're watching YouTube videos about people playing games while you're playing games. He's like, well, of course, mom, that's, you know, that's just what you do. And at the time, I, I thought that was just the most bizarre thing in the world. And I realized <laughs> as I am trying to figure out how to edit this, that I now do the same thing, and a lot of us do. I sit around and watch YouTube videos about cross-stitch and people cross-stitching while I'm cross-stitching. Um, it's come full circle. And so now I'm thinking, this kid was, like, so ahead of the times. He was so, like, uh, yeah, I don't even know. Anyway, he he just laughed um, really hard at that, and um, we, we had a good little walk down memory lane. But anyway, so um, I've been watching videos, and I know a little bit about the editing. I'm going to try it out, and one of the things I'm going to try out is to add the picture right here. So we'll see how that goes. So another whip this last few weeks was This Is The Day. Plum Street Samplers. Love, love, love this one. This one is actually, this is a joy to work on. I, I really enjoy stitching on it. It's on a 32 count. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. I do like doing the brickwork, 
Um, I don't like changing colors constantly on patterns, but I also don't really enjoy huge runs of the same thing. Um, so this one just really feel, fills the that that niche for me. And since I've worked on this, and again, I will put a picture right here, hopefully. I have finished the flower pot, started on this little border here, because I wanted to make sure the flower pot and the house were equidistant from the top, or basically they were gonna meet on that line. And they did, amazingly enough. Um, I f did not finish. I worked a lot more on the outline of the brickwork, did quite a bit on that and out of the door in. So um, that was a few days of work. Um, but I just, I love stitching on this every single time I get it out. But it's not really in season. I do have a, a home ready for it, but it's not really something that I really wanted to get done like ASAP. I want to work on Halloween, because I love Halloween, um, and fall. And then I also wanted to um, get my bee display out in the next week or two. So I really want to get um, Honey of a Tiny Town done. So that is that one. The next whip is um, Salute to Abigail, which is this one. And this is in the book. Sweet Land of Liberty, Blackbird Designs. One of the ones in there. I love everything in here. Love it. And this is the one I'm doing a thread a day on because it's obviously not time to really do patriotic stuff. I'm not one that does it year round. I love it, but um, normally I would be sick of doing it right now. But the thread a day, um, that kind of works. Plus, this is the one that I'm doing the silk on, and I've never done silk before, and I'm dying to. I need to finish a couple of projects before I can justify buying stuff for another new project when there's other new projects I haven't even started yet. But I wanna do something in silk. I wanna do a sampler in silk, like a big girl sampler. So hopefully soon. But so since I'm working in silks and since it's a thread a day, I am able to work a little bit on this. And it was so funny, I saw on Instagram today, and I meant to look her name up, um, Someone else is working on this same part of the border right here, and she was so frustrated because she had to frog it all, uh, or not all, but she had to frog like that bottom part, and I, I feel for her, man. I hate doing that, um, but it was like we were kind of at the same spot on it, so that was kind of neat. I need to figure out who that was. I started following her, and um, I said, maybe we can, you know, keep each other going. She can be my inspiration to work on this, so um, I did not work on this at all at the beach or for the next couple of days. I just wasn't feeling getting the silk and everything out in the in the breeze down there. So it it got shelved for about a week, but I'm I'm back working on this again in the morning, one thread a day. And I love that. And that is living in sorry, I'm I'm bad about showing bags and things. Um that I'm doing with Dinky Dye Silk. It's being stitched on dark cobblestone 40 count Zweigart. And that's living in this bag. I had made this one um, I love the zigzag stitching. I love the way that that got quilted. I made this one using Nicole, Nicole Spore's uh, tutorial for her um, Flossiversary stitch along that we did. And that's the back of that. Love, love, love that bag. Love it so much that I made a Halloween one, which I'll show you in a minute to, to go with it. So that's that one. Um, the car stitch. That is this one, the Milk and Cream Company, also from Plum Street. Um, I finished up the the crew down at the bottom. Yeah, it's all done. And then I started working on the tin bucket over here. And it seems like there was one other thing. And then soon I have to do the one over one and finish the flowers. This one is so close to dawn, but I quit working on it at work for whatever reason during my car stitch. I guess because of the beach and a couple days I just really didn't get a lunch. Um, so I need to get back to that and get that one finished. But that's that's where that is, a little bit of progress. And I think the only other thing that I have worked on since I've seen you guys, and I didn't work on it much, I had shown you that I got finished um, 
or I had shown you that I was almost finished during my whip parade with this, which is Costume Party from Hands On Design. I didn't work much on it. This really just, I need to whip it out and get it done. Um, it just needs a few more things, but I did work on some of the back stitching over here, over here, and here. So a little bit of that. I, I worked on it a little bit. I did that on the 13th for my Halloween stitch, um, and I meant to just get it out the next day and finish, and I did not. So I'm going to put that one away. And so we did new starts, we did whips, um, August plans. So for August, I'm obviously working on the, you know, and I didn't even look up the name of that, um, that little scissor fob from Barbara Anna. Oh, it's called Trick or Treat. So that, that'll be one of the ones I work on because I'm working on it now. It's already August. Don't know when that happened. Um, that'll be one of my, I really like the five for five. For those of you that did not watch one of the other videos, don't remember really who came up with it. I think it was Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher, but I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of like the 12 for 12 for New Year's, but it's five for five. So over the month for five days, you work on a project. And so you have five projects, five days each. And then that leaves you four, five, six days that you can do other things. So you can do the 13th stitching. You could do your Sabbath stitching. You could do your Christmas stitching. Um, any anything you wanted to do in those other days or do catch up stitching because there's a lot of days I just don't get to stitch not a lot, but more than I would like um, So anywho for my five for five that is one the other is I'm going to do Nicole Spore's um, Stitch along for Halloween and that is flying lessons from Silver Creek samplers. I have all that on order um, And I'm really excited about that. I actually had the linen already here um, I want to finish Honey of a Tiny Town, so that's the third one. I quite possibly will work on Let's Talk Stitching, not sure on that. And, oh, for the fifth one, I mean the fourth one, sorry, the Stitching with the Housewife Barns. Um, September's almost done, so I need to finish September, so I need to give that a few days. And then for my last one, Unless something else comes up, because I think there's something I'm forgetting that I wanted to do. Um, I really, really want to start on Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Can't even talk. So, for that one, this is the bag I made for that. I love it. It's using the new Fig Tree Harvest Moon fabrics and doing that really cute little zigzag stitch for the quilting. I actually, that's part of my haul as I bought, well, I'll come to that in a minute. But anyway, so made this bag. I've been on a bag making frenzy lately. And that is for, oh goodness, sorry for the crinkling. I don't have the picture on top. So sorry. That is for Halloween at Hawk Run Polo. I think I first saw this on Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Cheryl was working on it. Um, and Kimberly would just show it periodically, and I was like, wow, totally cool. Um, Joy is working on this one right now. She's done with the first block from what I remember, and she is from Carolina Stitchers, and that is a, so let me sidetrack for a minute. Actually, I'll come back to Joy. Um, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, dying to stitch this. I do now have all the floss. The first block, I went ahead and put that on floss drops. Isn't that pretty? So that's just for the first block. And then <laughs> there are still that many more left that I have to do that to. That's actually what I did on the uh, 31st of July because I was labeling those and cutting those up. And I got a great big piece from Hollis Hands Creates of um, Hazelwood from Fiber on a Whim. It's not at all what's called for, and um, I kind of wanted one of those really cool light ones with yellow modeling, green modeling, purple modeling, something like that, something kind of spooky looking, but I'm really afraid to order a half yard of fabric and not know if I'm going to like it or not. So I knew that this was something I would use for something else, and I held up all the floss, and even though it's not really Halloween-y, I think it looks really pretty with it, so let me kind of... Chunk those back up here. 
I think that's going to work great. They're going to show up beautifully. There are a couple of neutrally browns, but it's a lot of full coverage, so I think I'm actually completely insane to even think about doing this pattern. Like, I've totally lost my mind. It'll take me 15 years, maybe. Um, oh, but so anyway, half yard is more than plenty. I will have the hazelwood that I need for the, um, for Nicole's so long, uh, stitch along the, um, Flying lessons. So I already got that and I've got the pattern on the way. So I'm excited about that. So that's probably going to be my fifth one. Um, and I will come back and tell you why in a minute when I get to that segment of today's program. So that's, that is um, one plan. The other one I really kind of wanted to do, but um, I never got around to. Okay, sorry. Um, my pasta's ready, doing a um, cheesy masticelli. Uh, for any of you guys that ever went to the Pampered Chef parties back in the day, that was one of my favorite recipes. So that's what was in the oven. Had to go rescue that. But the other one I really wanted to work on is Seaside Tiny Town, which is <laughs> somewhere. Oh, my goodness. Right there. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely adorable. And I love, love, love the colors. Um, so I really wanted to start on that at the beach, but for whatever reason, I decided I need to get the bees done in season. But I did want to show you the floss is really pretty. I have all but, I think, one or two. And I'm stitching that on a scrap of some kind of mystery linen. But I did want to show you I had gotten fabric, and I think the project folder just turned out really cute. This is actually my own design, which I'm still tweaking, um, and I'll show you guys that another day. Um, so that's a possibility, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think that's the end of my, and then I'll still work on a stitch a day. I think that's the end of all of that. I wanted to um, mention haul really quickly. I don't have a ton this time. I did get the um, the threads and the pattern for Seaside Tiny Town. I did pick up all the threads for Hawk Run Hollow as well as all the DMC for um, this I know. I'm not going to start that yet, but I did, I did get floss while I was at it. And then this was what I had gotten when I was at Annabella's up in... Um, Waynesville? I don't know why I can't remember the name of that town. I think it's Waynesville. It's up near Cherokee, North Carolina. And I had gotten that fabric, so I picked up from, hmm, probably from Annabella's Online, um, another half yard of each of these so I can do maybe a project bag, maybe do some, um, what are they called? Um, <laughs> corner stones and a quilt and maybe do some sort of a patchwork quilt. I don't know. But I decided while she had that, I needed to get a little bit more of that. Um, I picked up from Fat Quarter Shop. I ordered the backing for my son's quilt, which I have now finished putting on the borders and put that, um, I have, um, what do you call it? Oh my gosh. Um, made the quilt sandwich basted it and it's ready for me to quilt which is my least favorite part and I think I know what I'm going to do but I'm just procrastinating and I need to get it done uh, but I had ordered the backing for that quilt from Fat Quarter Shop and while I was at it you know I got a jelly roll of that Harvest Moon enough to either make a bunch of bags or um, I don't know maybe a table runner or something out of that as well and then a few just loose pieces from that line to do different things with. Um, and then the last thing haul-wise, actually two last things haul-wise, I got one more pattern for Farmhouse Christmas. I need to get back to that. I just have not been feeling that. And I got some random fabric. Um, this one is from Hollis Hands Creates. It is Spellbound 36 count from Needle Bling thought that was really pretty. I kind of want to do something Halloween on that, but not really sure. I'm, I have one I'm debating. Um, also from her, I got 32 count Simply Sage, and this is Fabrics by Stephanie. I've used some of her linen before, and I love her linen. Um, I've never ordered green linen. I thought, let's give that a try. Let's do something a little different. I thought that was really, really pretty. And then when I was ordering from Annabella's, yeah, and I'm sorry about the crinkle because it really annoys me. Um, people say sorry, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, what? what's the problem? But um, 
there are some of us that literally just cringe when you hear the crinkle. When I do it, it's not so bad, but if somebody's opening like a little bag of candy or something, I am losing my brain. Um, so I get it, and I apologize. But this one I had gotten from Annabella's. I thought that was really, really pretty. That is Kuntzi 32 Count Belfast Linen. Um, I just thought that was a really pretty lavender. I don't know, I'm just in a purple mood lately. So, um, but that's the end of my haul from the last couple of weeks, at least everything that I remember. And um, the only other thing I need to do, um, actually have two more things. One is I wanted to do a couple of shout outs. So um, the one I had already mentioned, and that's Laura at Textile Crafts, who is just amazing, absolutely love her. Go check her out. Um, Another one, and these are actually all new to me. Um, another kind of new floss tuber is So Tattered, and she just put up um, a video this afternoon. I believe it's her third one, and that is Katie. Um, she ha She is precious. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely adorable as well. And she does a lot of, um, like, sampler stitching. Um, beautiful things. I have no idea how she stitches as fast as she does the projects she does. But they are beautiful. Um, beautiful quilts as well. And she's pretty new. So tattered. So check her out. And then um, somebody who found me, who found my floss tube, I guess randomly, have no idea, or she may have found me on Instagram, and then we found each other's floss tube. I can't remember anyway, but I know she found me first, and that was Joy from Carolina Stitchers, and that is Joy and Emma, and they are, they are great. They, are, they have this wonderful vibe, this like mom-daughter vibe going on, and it's really, really cute. Um, I really like both of them. I've only watched a couple of videos, I have to admit. Found them when I was at the beach, um, and we were chatting back and forth that they, you know, live just like an hour away from where I was. Um, but anyway, so I need to go back and binge watch all of their stuff. I haven't gotten a chance to do that yet. But that is, again, Carolina Stitchers. And then I found two new ones this week to me that just popped up in my feed. And I'm sure that everybody has seen these people, I would think, but I had never heard of them before. Um, and I thought they were both really, really cute um, personalities and beautiful stitching. One is Seattle Stitcher. Um, her name is Megan. The other is the Museum Stitcher. And I'm completely blanking on her name. I'm so sorry. I'll put it right there if I remember. Um, but I will link all of them below in the description box. I will put links to any of the YouTube channels that I mentioned. I will put links to um, the sew along that um, Nicole Spore is doing and links to the Chris Sherman bag as well as the Tiger Lily Designs bag. So I'll give you guys a bunch of links this time. And the last thing I need to do is I need to announce the winner but here goes my pasta again so i'll be right back okay last interruption so finally i want to do the giveaway from last week and or actually two weeks ago um i did not put a keyword in there which i realize now would have been way easier i had asked for favorite author or favorite book or in lieu of that a favorite designer if you aren't um, into reading or aren't a reader and the name that I picked, what I did was I just pulled all the different comments, numbered them all, and picked a random number. And what we ended up with, I had my husband help me with this, is Norma Lopez 540. You are the winner from last week. So I will um, comment on your comment down below. And I'm assuming your name is Norma, don't know. But um, Norma Lopez, if you will uh, respond to um, my comment, I will, um, I need your mailing address. I can give you my email in the comment and you can just actually email me. That might be the easiest. Sorry, I'm still kind of new with this. Um, so what, what she has won is it was the Hello Summer pattern, which was part of the, um, no, I keep wanting to call it the So Sampler Club. It was the, um, mm, Stitch Quarterly Club. So the Navy Ada, the cute little bag, the floss, the needle minder, 
pattern and the little dots. So congratulations. If you, again, will email me, um, I will put my email in the comment where I will respond to you there and let me know and I'll get that on my way to you. So while we're at it though, I decided let's go ahead and do another giveaway this week. So again, if you will be a subscriber, if you will like the video and um, please be uh, a U.S. resident and 18 years of age or older since I have to ask for your address. And I thought I would do a pass along the love I will show my completed one of this here in another, you know, few videos. This is from Little House Needleworks, and it's called Pumpkin Hollow Farms. It was a great stitch. I did this one a few years ago. So let's keep with the season. So if you want to be in on the um, on the giveaway or want to be in on the drawing for the giveaway, if you will also comment with the word pumpkin somewhere in your comment and then I can actually use the YouTube um, random comment picker thing I don't know what it's called I'll figure it out um, I did um, like I said work a little bit on the editing hopefully I can get all the little segments together smoothly we'll see how that goes but um, thank you all for returning that have been before thank you for subscribing it means so much to me Thank you for your comments, the wonderful comments. Um, thank you also for all the book suggestions. Um, Norma Lopez had actually left her favorite designer, which was Blackbird, which is absolutely one of mine as well. Um, but uh, I did get quite a few comments that also included, um, or included instead, favorite author, favorite books. Made a great list. I did end up, my stepdaughter actually lent me um, books from Ruby Dixon. It's some alien romance series. I've started it. I'm intrigued. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure yet. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, but anyway, thank you again for joining me. If you would like and subscribe and comment, it all helps the, uh, the Floss Tube channel. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all again in the next couple of weeks. Thanks so much.